Good morning, trusted advisors. I'm Marlon McKelvey, President of Consumer Directed Benefit Solutions, as you know. So I figure if it's an obvious question for somebody that's been in business and has a bunch of employees, this would probably be a good primer for a lot of you if you're talking to some of your friends that have businesses. The old, you've probably seen the old movie sometimes where the king dies and there's, the king is dead, long live the king. Well, with healthcare reform, there are some people that say, group health insurance is dead. Not exactly, long live group health insurance. So we're gonna talk about this here just a little bit. Well, the landscape has certainly changed. <coughs> And with the passage and implementation of the Affordable Care Act, uh, em employers are finding themselves presented with a vastly different landscape and really the most radical transformation in health insurance in the history of our nation. And these changes change the character of health insurance plans, how they can be designed, what they can cover, how they can be priced, how they can be issued. Just virtually every aspect of the industry has really been uh, taken upside and down and and uh, shaken very, very heavily. And then when you add to that the introduction of the government health insurance marketplaces of an, as an entirely alternative new delivery mechanism for people to get health insurance, that adds another confusing aspect into the equation for many employers. So many employers should often ask themselves as an employer, should I continue or should I offer group health insurance to my employees? Quite frankly, the answer to this question is going to be different from, for each and every employer. But let's examine some reasons today why the answer should be yes. First of all, oops, don't go back there, thank you. You do this not because it's, I haven't been an employer yet that just says, I just have so much money, I just want to you know, throw it away and give health insurance or whatever to my folks. It's really self interest to attract and retain quality employees. Hiring, training, and replacing employees are big overhead expenses to businesses that they want to minimize. And as an employer has more demanding skill levels for the workforce for what they're delivering to the marketplace than the competition for that type of labor is much more intense. And those folks are looking for a benefits package that goes beyond just paycheck. So, first of all, employees with group health insurance are more productive. They have higher morale. They lose less time off from work, both for themselves and their dependents, than their uninsured counterparts. So this is one of those soft cost, soft savings kind of issues that an employer should factor into their equation. <clears throat> Also, employees with health insurance are generally, can't say universally, but generally less subject to the financial and emotional stress due to health care expenses than their uninsured employee, uh, you know, counterparts. Once again, you can imagine uh, if your wife's dealing with uh, cancer and you're uninsured, you're probably going to be a tad bit distracted at work. And then an investment in an employer's most important asset. Think about how much many businesses spend on pieces of equipment, on computers, on software, on phone systems, and yet all of that is absolutely worthless and doesn't generate a cent if you don't have the right people operating all of those things. And so health insurance and other employee benefits are one of the most tangible manifestations of an employer, how you value your workforce that an employer can really show besides that paycheck. And to pause, go back I guess here, while, well, go back, there we go. And I can never assure you, in fact I can assure you, 100% of your employees will never appreciate what you do for them, but most of them will. It's just human nature. Here's another good reason. <laughs> Buying individual health insurance, if you folks have been through this uh, in the last couple of years, is hard, it's confusing, yes. and group benefits make life simpler for most employees. The convenience of having it at the workplace, having somebody like me with 30 some odd years experience sitting across the table from them going, explaining, okay, you know, this is how the plan works, this is what you should do, yada, yada, yada. Uh, 
is, is, is a big plus, coupled with the ease of payroll deductions and making the payments. Uh, so these simplify tasks and responsibilities that quite frankly, most people's employees are very uncomfortable uh, and uninformed about doing themselves. <laughs> then there's some very significant tax advantages that still exist. First of all, when employers contribute towards employee benefits, health insurance, and other programs like that towards their employees, is a deductible business expense for that employer. If on the other hand, an employer just says, Todd, I'm going to give you $200 a month to go out and buy your own health insurance. Well, first of all, an employer can't deduct that on a pre-tax basis. Secondly, you really has to add it to your gross income, so you're not really getting $200. You get $200 less whatever all the taxes and stuff are. Another advantage is that most employees share the cost of their health insurance. And so that can be set up on a pre-tax basis as well under what's called a Section 125 plan with the IRS. So that essentially the employees share of their health insurance premiums are subsidized by whatever their tax bracket is. Neither of these tax advantages are available in the individual health insurance marketplace. It also helps a person's or an employer's employees avoid the individual tax mandate penalty. As you can see up here, that is going to be a steadily escalating penalty in the years ahead. And for people that are middle, upper income kind of families, it could be thousands of dollars. <coughs> Another big access, or another big issue here that kind of flies under the radar for a lot of people is health care provider access. So I can tell you as a guy that sells both individual and group health insurance that there are dramatic differences in those two worlds now. And while we're not on the forefront of things as on both coasts, Individual health insurance plans are the most aggressively moving toward what we call narrow networks. Skinnier networks of doctors, reduced uh, networks of pharmacists available to them. So just to give you a couple examples, United Healthcare's individual health insurance plan is essentially an HMO plan nowadays. You have to get a referral from a primary care physician before you can go see a specialist and have it covered as an in-network expense. You really don't have coverage if you go out of network unless it's a life or limb threatening emergency. That's a big change for a lot of people. Humana, if you're going to healthcare.gov to purchase insurance there and you decide that they're who you want, the product they offer there has a very limited pharmacy network. So it's a great product, but you just got to understand that your pharmacy choices are Walmart, Sam's Club, and CVS. That's it. Walgreens, Rite Aid, no way. So group health insurance plans still generally bring the broadest provider network to their employees. Another big issue is value. While both individual and group health insurance plans have undergone very substantial changes since the Affordable Care Act, changes are really most visibly dramatic in the individual marketplace. And generally employees in our part of the country can get a better financial deal when all things are taken into account in the group health insurance environment and get more comprehensive coverage generally in the form of lower deductibles and still having plans with co-pays and those type of features than if they were to go out and buy individual health insurance unless they're qualified for a lot of subsidies and stuff in the uh, marketplace. Another aspect is coverage continuity. Now, you're sitting there going, what, what about this? Well, if you're one of those folks that's not, that makes too much money to qualify for subsidies in the health insurance marketplace and you buy individual health insurance, then something distracts you or whatever and you forget to make your monthly payment, they can and probably will cut you off like that. Uh, as long as an employer is making that monthly payment, then there's really no big concern there. And I've even had employers miss their monthly payments and get them reinstated uh, retroactively. So sometimes people don't pay close attention to their paying their bills. You also have group funding flexibility. So there's a bunch of different ways that an employer can kind of 
move the pieces of the puzzle around to try and get the most effect, cost effective solution for a group of people, a lot of these tools aren't available in the uh, individual other than, as I say here, health savings accounts. So, to be clear, group health insurance has never been the perfect answer for every employer's situation. As I said, reports of its death are over, uh, exaggerated, and still, as you can see here, the overwhelming majority of Americans get their health insurance through their employer. Uh, but for employers whose uh, workforces are low income, high turnover, uh, those are the folks that uh, perhaps may be doing themselves, uh, their employees a disservice by offering group health insurance because they're blocking them off from the substantial subsidies that might be available to them through healthcare.gov. That's where advice from someone like me comes in again. So I'm, I, you know, I'm not hes hesitant about saying, no, group insurance is not the right answer for your workforce that makes $8 an hour. So I want to thank you for investing your time and let me go a little <coughs> bit over the ding here today. Uh, for the interest that you've shown uh, in the role of, uh, that is evolving for group health insurance in our society. But even more, I hope this uh, brings home the need to have an experienced, competent uh, professional to help guide people through all of these various issues that I've addressed today. Hopefully you've learned a little bit of something. Thank you very much.